Welcome to DCTP.TV live from uh, the campus party in Berlin in the former airport Tempelhof. My next guest is a living legend, I must say. Welcome John the Crunchman Draper. How are you everybody? <laughs> Had a great talk here in Berlin. <laughs> talked about all kinds of secret stuff. Well, what kind of secret stuff do you talk about? Well, we talked about how I can actually find numbers that the phone company don't want you to know about. Uh-huh, okay, how's that? Uh, well, first of all, it's uh, a preliminary pattern, pattern analysis on existing numbers. I would make a difference between the existing numbers and non-existing numbers. Uh, the best way to do that is to look at phone directory and take all of the numbers and then see what patterns there are based on where the, where the exchange is located at. So if you have an exchange over here, then all the numbers in that exchange, probably the first three numbers will be probably the same for that exchange. And it used to be that way, but not anymore because uh, when they have digital switches today, numbers can be anything. In fact, the cell phone companies now will actually let you keep your phone number with you wherever you go. I don't know what it's like in Germany, but in the US yeah, that's the true same, now. Yeah. So you could keep your number with you wherever you go. And did you find any, any secret numbers? Oh yeah, they're all over the place. Uh, even when I went to Russia, I was able to do some rather interesting stuff. And did you call them? Well, I didn't call and talk to a human being, but what I did do was I would, I would call in, uh, invalid numbers in the Moscow area and with a Russian friend next to me, I'd hand him the phone and tell me what that recording says. So I would be able to like identify the recording and by identifying the different recordings at what number you call to, to get these kinds of recordings and indicate to me that this number is like a regular number, a subscriber number, but this number over here has got a recording that's totally different. This number is a special number. So then I'd focus on that area group. And uh, usually uh, when you're dealing with numbers, I e they assign numbers in groups of blocks of 10. So I would scan uh, 0010, 0020, 0030, 0040, and then when I found that the 0040 had some valid numbers in it, then I'd do 0041, 0042, 0043. Okay, so telephone system obviously is a still an, an interesting. It's still existence, uh, but it's all digital, it's all it's electronic. It's all digital. And yes, they have secret numbers in the phone system, but you just have to find them. Okay, so you became very famous because of uh, 20, 2600. 2600. And the whistle. You have to tell yeah. us uh, all about it. When was it? 1974? 1970, 1969. Ah, 1969. That early? Yeah. Oh, I didn't know. Okay. I got out of the Air Force in 68. Uh, about six months to a year later, in 1969, I ran across some blind kids. Uh, strictly by accident. Well, actually, it wasn't really by accident. I was actually testing a transmitter. I would uh, 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 a transmitter for uh, radio FM radio. transmitter, uh, yeah. Okay. And uh, I wanted to see how far it would go. So I just hooked up a makeshift antenna and stuck it out the window and drove around to see how far I, I could pick yeah. it up. It had about a five mile range just with a piece of wire hanging out the window. And then, uh, and then I, at the end of my, my quote unquote transmission, I went back to the, to the transmitter and I hooked the microphone up to it and I says, if anybody could hear this, call me at 264-8773, which is my number then. And sure enough, the phone rang. And uh, the guy that on the other end sounded like he was a DJ. He's got that really deep voice. Uh -huh. And it uh, turned out that he was a blind kid. And he happened to fine tune through the dial and happened to find the station. And uh, told me he picked up the signal. I says, well, great. I'll, uh, could I have your number in case I want, might want you to test my signal again later on? And I says, because uh, he had a nice little indicator on his little FM receiver that told how strong the station was. Yeah. So I could use him to actually tell me uh, how to tune it so it could get more of a signal. Okay. And so he gave me the 264, or 265-0044 as a number. Well, at, so a couple of days later, I called the number up because I wanted another signal check called him up and I couldn't reach him. Instead, I got a tone, a loud tone. So I thought my phone was out of order, so I called the operator up and says, operator, I'm having trouble reaching this number. Please call 265-0044 for me, yeah. please. And she says, that's a special telephone test number. How'd you get that number? 
I said, I don't know, it was given to me. Maybe I just copied it down wrong. Thanks, operator, hung up. And then? And what, what well, and then I just went back to my old business of doing whatever I was doing. Uh, then a little later on, uh, two weeks later, he called me again, Denny, yeah. the same guy again. Then I asked him about that 445 number. He says, oh, that's a loop around number. I said, what's a loop around number? He says, it's a number used by the phone company to test it. I says, yeah, I called the operator, and that's what she told me. And he says, yeah, well, you called the operator, and she told you that it was a test number? And I says, yeah. He says, well, I've never gotten that good service with operators before. They were always really closed mouth about these kinds of things. Uh -huh. So I said, okay. So tell me about loop around numbers. And he told me what they were and asked me to call one. And he gave me one in Illinois. He said, call this number in Illinois. I said, why should I call Illinois? It's a long distance call. Back then, long distance calls were like we're 50 very cents expensive, a minute. Yeah. Yeah. And so I, I said, well, but, why? But hold on a sec, why did he give you that number? Because he, wanted, because he didn't want to give his real number out. Ah, okay. Over the phone. So he g gave out this secret test number. Yeah, but I guess it's a number that he used, uh, he'd, he'd, he'd used sometimes when he's home. Okay, and then he gave you another test number uh, for the long distance call. Uh, that, yeah, that was just another loop around number, but it was outside my local area. And I says, he says it's free. I says, why is it free? He says, because it doesn't soup. What do you mean by soup? Soup is short for supervision. Supervision means when you pick up the phone, yeah. they, 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 they know that you picked up the phone, the billing equipment can start billing your number. Yeah. That's called, those are called supervisory signals by the phone company. It's a phone company term. Supervision. So I says, uh, can we meet and talk? He says, sure. I says, do you want my address? I said, sure. He gave me the address. Uh, he couldn't give me directions how to get there because he's blind. Okay. So I looked on a city map and found out where he was located at. Yeah. He says, give me the nearest cross street. Okay, I know where you're at. Fine, I'll go there. So I drove there and I go up to his house, knock on the door, and his dad picked comes to the door and I said, is Denny there? He said, yeah, sure, follow me. And he takes me in this little room in the back of the house where Denny was and he opens up the door and he says, Denny, you have a guest? And I come in and I says, hi. And it was all dark in there. They're blind, they don't need lights. Uh, uh. So I says, you might have to turn on the light. Yeah, I have to move your microphone a little bit. Okay. And uh, he said, sure. I saw four people in there. All, three, all three, three of them were blind. There was only one person in there that could see just a little bit. I asked him, I says, uh, tell me about how you can make free calls. And Jimmy says, well, here's how you do it. You hit the E above middle C, beep, and that's the same as the 2600 hertz tone, which is the same as the Captain Crunch whistle. And that's when they told me about the Captain Crunch whistle. And he showed me one. He even gave me one after a while. And I blow the whistle, and sure enough, the line goes, ka -tink. I says, wow, that's really cool that you can do that. But what can you do with it? How do you make free calls? He says, well, you can't do it from San Jose, but you can do it from San Francisco. You can whistle a call by going, toot, 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 like that. And you toot the number out in the whistle by pulsing the number, like as if you had dial pulse. Yeah. Well, that kind of sucked. It would only work in San Francisco and not San Jose. I says, how does it work in San Jose? And he says, well, it works in San Jose by using multi-frequencies. And I says, how does that work? And then Jimmy went to show me on his organ what multi-frequencies were. He started banging out the number on the organ. I says, I remember those tones. I'd hear those every time I make a long distance call in the background. He says, yeah, they're the same tones. And they're 700, 900. 1100, 1300, 1500, and 1700 hertz. And you mix the two together by, by the, the sounds. It says, how are they mixed together? He says, real easy. 700 has a weight of zero. Uh, 900 has a weight of one. Uh, 1100 has a weight of three. A weight, what does it mean a weight? A weight value of three. So when you have 1100, that, that is equal to three. Yeah. 1100 plus, uh, 900, 900 is 2, 1100 is 3, so that's 6. So 900 and 1100 it adds, is equal to the digit 6. 700 plus 900 is 0 plus 1 is 2. 700 plus 1100 is 2 plus 0 is 2. 1100 plus 900 is 2 
one plus two is three. So each number has its own value by, by, by mixing those combinations ah, okay. of tones up. So I went home and built a blue box for the very first time. And I couldn't believe it. It worked, it actually fucking worked. And I just sat there just dumbfounded. I was just freaking out my memory. My parents just thought I was stark even mad running around between the piano and the, and the, and the, and the, my equipment. Uh, so uh, for those who don't know, you, you had a way to make long distance calls for free yeah. by, by dialing an 800 number, waiting for, the, uh, waiting for the number to ring, and then sending 2600 down the line. It goes 2600 hertz. And yeah. yeah, and it would blow the connection off. You get a little kachink sound, and then you get a soft hiss, and then you just dial, you do the key pulse first of all, which is uh, 1700 plus 1100 is key pulse, and then you did the number, and then you do 1700 plus 1500 is start, and then, so you have the opening tone, the number, and the closing tone. The reason why you have to do the opening and closing tone between the numbers is that the trunk can also take six digits, three digits, five digits, any number of digits was acceptable on the trunk level because a trunk level is the highest level you could get. Okay. So you found a way by, by, by inserting tones, frequencies into the phone Into the system. trunk, and it's in the, the same trunk as the operator has. All right, and you had, you, you had free calls and you can, could dial numbers. But you but built But you could also dial one, two, one to get the inward operator, one, three, one to get the root rate operator, and you could also dial 101 for the test board. Okay. So you could do a lot of really a lot interesting stuff. A lot stuff. of things. But the thing is, you, bu you built a box, you could do it with, but the mechanism itself, it was told to you, right? Well, but yeah. But you, didn't, you didn't find it, uh, who, who found out? I mean, the guy who called you, the right? The blind kids found yeah. out because they could tell by their, by their pitch, they could hear what's ah. going on. Because they were blind and had special hearing abilities. They were able to hear through the, they were able to hear through the crosstalk what really happened. They could hear the 2600 multi-frequency ah. go, they hear the Toyota beep, they hear All the right. cheek sound. And you, you implemented it in hardware. And More. I just did it in hardware. What they did, it, they did it with an organ. Ah, okay. See, they did it with an organ, and I did it with a little box. So, and uh, for in my perception, this is uh, one of the first this freaking, this phone phone hacking freaking started with that, right? Yeah. So, w how how, I mean, you had a lot of trouble because of that, right? How was what was the reaction of AT and T, the phone company? Well, I you know I stopped doing it from home once the once the phone freaks started telling their teacher about it, I figured I, I figured probably one or two days from now that the security agents would probably be on to me. So I stopped doing it from home. Uh-huh. You know, right away. It wasn't until I did it, I did it over at a place that was monitored because I was set up, like a sting operation. Uh-huh. I did it from a certain phone that was tapped by the FBI through a pre-arrangement. And so, hey, can you demonstrate the blue box for me? Come on over tonight, you know, kind of thing. I go over to his house. Uh. He was on a nice step exchange, which meant that I could do it without using 2600. And so I did it, but the line was being tapped. The FBI heard my voice and voice printed me and identified me. And do you regret anything? Not really, I just regret how I was treated. You know, people like Mendick were offered High-paying jobs in computer security. I never got that such treatment. I, the only treatment I got was to be thrown in a jail and throw away the key, and being served bread and rice every day. That's how I was treated. So uh, I don't know why, but I seem to be the fall guy. You know, I'd be the one that always draws a short stick. You know. And do you see? Do you see um, guys who work or act in the tradition of this phone freaking today? that live up to the tradition, movements. You mean the old school people? No, from today. Do you see anything in today that meets, that is that is hacking or freaking in this tradition you started? A little bit, but you know, it's not like you, the old days where you were actually able to do it with very simple equipment. Now you're using computers, you're intercepting phone calls, you're doing things with uh, the OIP and stuff like that. So it's all different now today. The technology's gotten more sophisticated. Okay. 
And you're writing a book now, uh, autobiography? Yeah, I'm working on autobiography right Is now. Is it finished already, you said? Or? I got 11 chapters so far, but I got a lot more work to right. do. My biggest, my biggest and most time consuming thing is getting a hold of the people that I, that I lived with back in the day, getting them, die, getting them scheduled for interviews. Did you meet Steve Jobs before he died? No, I no. never had a chance to meet but him. But you went to his house. Whoa, you went to his house to meet him? I went to his house to meet him. Uh, one week before he passed. He was living in Palo Alto. At a nondescript house. So I walk up to his house. It's very famous that he doesn't have any security set up. No security at all. Now I just walk up to his house. He's got a door there. The minute I went off the sidewalk onto the pathway to the door, I took two steps mm -hmm. and four off-duty police uh, policemen un that were off-duty, uh, Ununiform, there were no uniform. They come to me and said, "May I help you, sir?" Uh huh. So I said, "Yeah, I'm here to see Steve uh, Jobs, and um, and I used to work with him at Apple. I just wanted to wish him well." He says, "Well, he's not seeing anybody today. He's been very ill. He's in bedroom right now." And uh, I said, well, "Wow. Okay. Well, just tell him, just tell him that the Crunch Man was here to wish him well." And then I was bullshitting with the cops for a while, just you know, just to, and they were telling me all kinds of stories about it. And one guy, this guy Jose, actually got invited to his house when Carter was there, because Jobs had pre the president in his house. And uh, he was there to get all this stuff set up for the president. All right. He had to be vetted by the security, the Secret Service, and he had to have be searched and all that stuff, and they wouldn't let anybody near that house when the president was there. Are you, are you still playing with technology today? Are you still? Oh, absolutely. What yeah. do you do? Oh, well, I play around with voice over IP, uh, you know, the SIP protocol for a while, and now I'm actually uh, spending all my time working on my book right now and interviewing people because it's a long process. To and what do you do with the SIP and voice over IP? What is this so interesting? Oh, I'm just setting up, just experimenting around with different SIP servers and, and stuff like that. I wrote a SIP app. I wrote a SIP application. Okay. Did you find anything new, like? No, it's the no. same old protocol. I mean, uh, you know, I haven't. The thing that I don't like about it is these servers that people had set it up, they're set up with X-Lite, and I don't have access to these, uh, to some of these uh, RTP protocol stuff, only because uh, it's kind of like an old boys club. I have to pay a lot of money to get access to that. All right. Okay, John Draper, thank you very much for your time. Good yes. luck. Thank you very much. Uh, the, uh, the book will be published when, approximately? I'm not sure. Okay. But I've read done, you know? <laughs> you never okay. can tell that. Thank, Thank you, you very much. much. Thanks for coming.